state on potential cluster. But cluster is very uh, professional wording uh, in medical field. In other words, uh, statistically proven. So up until time, uh, we can use a cluster. We, in the, in the, instead, we use uh, accumulation. So we call this as an unusual accumulation patient. <laughs> because uh, statistically uh, it is not true. All right, next. Again, okay, this is the same slide, you know, uh, mm -hmm. eye melanoma is rare, 2,000 new death cases per year, so seven per million, five per million, so therefore, if you have somebody next to you have a, next door has an eye melanoma, it's a very unusual event. So then, uh, what we saw was uh, it, not on, in the 60s or 70s, they are young females. So if you go down to the you know, age peak of 20s, 30s, incidence is much less. Wow. So then that's kind of a, you know, some clinician sixth sense, something strange. Mm -hmm. That's kind of triggering this old event. So again, uvia melanoma, nobody knows why. And that's a very challenging uh, thing that because we don't know who is going to have. And as I show you, uh, pigment in the inside of the eye, bottom of the eye is not so rare. So 5% roughly Caucasian, and then the becoming cancer is much less rare. So, why this happened? There are many stories. And classical story is some genetic background, you know, light eye color, you know, fair skin color, you know. All. So that kind of <coughs> Caucasian, typical Caucasian uh, feature is going to increase the number of the, you know, uvia melanoma. On the other hand, in Asia, it's very rare. You know, Asian people, or, uh, you know, African American, maybe, you know, we usually ask where your ancestors come. So they say, oh, yeah, my grandpa is Caucasian, met married to my you know, grandma, African American. So now it's got some kind of mixture, you know. So usually very rare for the African American population, also Asian. So this is kind of genetic tendency for the Caucasian people. So, and then uh, somebody asked me about mutation syndrome. And then I didn't tell about the BRCA breaker two. Uh, these are only five percent of whole, uh, you know, eye melanoma patient population. Uh, there are multiple family members who have multiple different cancer: melanoma, mesothelioma, meningioma, uh, and kidney cancer, sometimes skin cancer. And then small number of the. Uh, patient family who has multiple breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate, prostate cancer, uh, they have a gene called the BRCA2, BRCA2. Uh, usually this is a Jewish people from uh, East uh, Europe. Uh, they have more genetic uh, weakness to get this disease, but nobody knows why. And third population is so-called some uh, pigment on the in the, in the face. Sometimes, uh, you know, Stagy Weber, congenital ocular and oculoderma, melanocytosis, like a nebus or altar, patient who has like a blue color on the surface, and then inside the eye also had a lot of pigment. And then, uh, surprisingly, these patients, uh, normal, not the cancer tissue, normal pigmented area has G protein mutation. So you talk about GNAQ gene mutation that was present in these uh, pigments on the surface of the eye. So therefore, this is a repair gene, this is a so-called driver gene, and there is one more hit that makes the children uh, grow up, grow up, grow, grow up, and then I'm over. Oops. Dead? No. There you go. All right. Then these are all speculation. So since this cluster, you know, uh, uh, is uh, you know discussed, uh, we have many email. Doctor Sato, this is it. 
you have to check this, this is it. So most of the case, uh, open door is open, so I keep that in somewhere, but the most of the case, we don't think that is the case, but uh, we just keep that as a possibility. The non-professional uh, risk factor, I guess I have to make sure one time at four o'clock. Okay. Uh, welding, you know, sparkling lights, and regular sunlight uh, usually doesn't go to the bottom eye. Most of them are, you know, absorbed by the lens. So, but uh, very strong UV lights or strong lights like welding, you know, sun lamp. Uh, cause I don't know, increase incest I don't know. And then we have a uh, people from Chernobyl. Very strong radiation, right? And it may cause it. But none of a uh, patient has this, 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 and only this. No, maybe Caucasian. They are Caucasian. So then, what they have? We have many kind of speculation. For example, this is a famous his, uh, like a. Theory, electromagnetic field disturbance. That could cause a decrease in milk product. That could cause some health harder, uh, cause considered health harder, and potentially cause some cancer. But uh, there's no clear relationship between, uh, you know, electromagnetic field and cancer, uh, especially I mean, it's a uh, statistically somewhat suggested, but. Uh, there's one investigator who has spent all life on this uh, kind of abnormality. He clearly said, oh, this is it. I know I'm not come from the electromagnetic field disturbance. But that is, you know, good opinion, but uh, we have no way to prove it unless somebody showed it, this cause the actual cancer. And then there's a paper published in a good journal saying that uh, there's some tendency uh, the correlation between eye melanoma incidence and uh, you know water fluorinated for, 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 water. In other words, if patient if family keep taking uh, water from the well, or if state has much less uh, you know uh, you know fluorination rate, they tend to have uh, more eye melanoma. So that triggers the question: uh, This could be an infection, or especially like a fungus, or strange, you know, bacteria. Then uh, histoplasmosis, or uh, uh, you know, and toxoplasma, and many cells come. But issue is a uh, fact is uh, there's no inflammation in the eye. So the idea is like a stomach cancer, you know, they go to the eye and they cause the irritation or inflammation, may trigger cancer genesis, so-called environmental you know, change, if especially infection is causing stomach cancer. But that is not, most likely is not the case because Dr. Shield has seen uh, you know, 500 cases per year. They say, no way, there's no inflammation. So therefore, this theory is somewhat turned down but somebody say RNA virus and avian virus, you know, bird virus, we don't know. But uh, at least uh, we can say is that there's no sign of associated inflammation in this area unless this virus or something specifically go to the eye, media, the tracts, and the other side. It's kind of less likely, but we have to keep that. Then uh, this is what uh, we are somewhat working on right now. Some occupational harder, you know, or paper is all small paper, you know, and now the number is not strong enough, and there's no evidence to show the actual relationship. But there's a paper related to PCB, uh, you know, or, uh, uh, you know, pollution, and then increase in uh, serum uh, PCB level in IML patients. So there's the explosion of the PCB facility. Such and such, and then there's a very a uh, unconfirmed uh, report from the military saying that the people who went to the uh, Vietnam uh, has more I mean, uh, you know, we can count several people who went to Vietnam and then who used the orange agent orange, but again, this is not confirmed at all. And then we tend to see painter, hairdresser, you know, but. Uh, again, statistical study and professional uh, hazard study didn't prove any of this. So therefore, these are on the back burner. 
and then we can check any of them in a mouse system or I'm going to talk to about that but more molecular testing basis uh, if we you know have more overlapping evidence that some of them uh, may cause this then we, we may be able to just more focus on one thing and then I have to you know tell that uh, Melody's gave us some money in the past donation uh, funding and then we did some experiment on this we are it's ongoing Right, next one. What would cooking have to do with it? Oh, it's some kind of chemical. Yeah, you know, you but I mean, I was a hairdresser, but they don't use chemical, well, hair color chemicals, but I did. Yeah, you can just spray, you know, you may have some. It used you know. to be, yeah. but now you're doing hair like yours or mine where yeah. you don't use the but spray. We're talking about 20 years ago. Okay, this cancer genesis is going to not tomorrow, yesterday. So it's from a long, long time ago? Yeah. There are two, uh, you know, carcinogenesis. I have no side. One is a very strong carcinogen, so-called DNA damaging, uh, you know, ge uh, genetic damaging uh, event. That is radiation, for example, Hiroshima, you know, Chernobyl. So one time uh, exposure is going to kill many cells, also make a cancer cell develop. The other one is so-called environment toxin. That's going to be a chronic exposure is needed in general. But chronic exposure uh, from the to the exposure to carcinogenesis takes 15 years. So anything that you are thinking is uh, we're talking about 10 or 15 years ago. So that's uh, we're going to show a little bit. So we see many patients. So and then a strange story starts. You know, one of the young patients from North Carolina comes to see me. And then, uh, you know, of course, she, she needed treatment at Jefferson. And then she said, yeah, I know uh, another young patient, female, young, eye melanoma, spread. Why do you know each other? Because she's in my high school, right? Later on, we have another young patient in their 20, in her 20, came to see us. Eye melanoma just diagnosis. And I know these two because I'm graduated from the same high school in, 20, in the 20s, the first one, 30s. So these are very skilled uh, population patients, young, and then they graduate from the same high school. Again, not me, myself, you think it's strange, and we think something wrong. Mm -hmm. right. Then, uh, you know, unfortunately, we lost a couple of people, and then fa family couldn't give up. I need to know why my daughter has it. So that triggered the investigation. There's five patients is found in a small community. They are all young, female. And then three or five graduated from the same high school. So now total number of uh, I mean, I in that specific area is almost reach 20. And then, of course, the amount of PCBs everywhere in this country, you know? And then some big lake uh, nucleotide is released legally. So maybe something wrong. That trigger, uh, trigger the uh, North Carolina investigation. We went there, uh, actually, Mary, this group, QNSight was there. Then we met people, and then uh, later on, doctor, uh, eye doctor, you know, and a couple other people organized committee, you know, then they got the funding from the North Carolina. So North Carolina kind enough to say, I need hundred thousand dollars. Like Brennan, Dr. Brennan is a retired of the Norris, but uh, he thought that this is something strange. Then, uh, next thing, another time that they come, I have another patient from the Alabama. And then he, she's young, she's in late 30s. All right, I know three, I know two other dead patients, all uh, in the same one year by dormitory when I was in college. College is like 10 or 15 years ago. These may be, you know, graduation maybe 10 years, 10, 15 years. It seems very strange. Yeah. Yeah, very it's all yeah. female, young, and then eventually we find a male patient. So, you know, it may not be only female, but uh, 
it's all skewed. Very rare number of population uh, you know, supposed to be in ranges from the same areas, same high school, same college, dormitory same, or ne nearby, next door. So we think that it's kind of something strange, you know, because maybe referral basis bias. Sure, you know, we side the center of the IV anomaly, so therefore many patients come from all those states. So, and then North Carolina investigation start, and then urban uh, university graduates organize committee fundraising, you know, we get some funding by themselves. But the meanwhile, we start looking at other patients, and then surprisingly, this is not official. Okay, if you don't need to explode, please don't. Because this is a uh, potential. But there are many patients from this area also. So, and then that triggered the question okay, there might be some unusual accumulation at the cluster. Because the, uh, Dr. Orloff, when she was a fellow, talked to states recently, uh, Alabama State, you know, announced the, their formal analysis saying that there is no cluster. So therefore, well, we can't call this cluster, uh, but uh, we feel, still feel very strange. Families still feel something wrong. So that's a kind of a, you know, trigger, trigger the main, uh, ongoing investigation of continuous research. All right, next one. This is a, I'm sorry, this is a face there, but uh, this is a public domain. So these are patients. Next one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this is a uh, five patients, uh, all female. You see, year, age. Yes. And then the all hunted is North Carolina, and problem is uh, the uh, place of this uh, diagnosis is different. If uh, this patient is diagnosed in Pennsylvania, they just start to Pennsylvania, not uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So if patient uh, is diagnosed in North Carolina. We call it North Carolina. The uh, patient, uh, you know, live in uh, many different uh, locations, but uh, by asking them, the commonality is they live in Huntersville in mm. a certain period of time. Okay. Wow. And then, yeah. You, you share some strain, right? Yeah. Feel some, uh, and again, unless you prove, uh, statistically prove this is abnormal, unless you find the co causal agent, and the government say, no, this is just coincidence. We have about seven people in my, like within 15 miles, that are in the last four years. In uh, Atlanta? Yep. Yeah. In the treat. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, we will talk. Okay, next one. This is uh, uh, Alabama, uh, you know, urban. And there's three female uh, dormitory, nearby dormitory, in the same college. And one male graduates from the same university, uh, you know, at around the same time. <laughs> because they are all my patients, okay. And then one patient, uh, you know, just sent email to me later. Yeah, Dr. Sato, I was involved in consulting job, consulting work on this campus. And I was sick after, you know, working in the, you know, the campus. How are they the number, like number one and two? Uh -huh. Their diagnosis is, is 18 years ago. Yeah. But they were at Auburn University at age 13? Yeah, these, are, these two are, you know, Auburn graduates. But they were, they had a diagnosis. Was was it? Because they, oh, they, no, they, 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 they are 18 years, years old. There's a lapse, as I told no, you. No, the data diagnosis is in 2001. Yeah, so they graduate back in... Oh, so uh, the data diagnosis is the same as the age, you're cor saying? Correct. Okay. Yes, this is the date of diagnosis. You know, this is both are 31 years old at the time of diagnosis. Okay, all right. And then they graduate, so therefore, the time that they graduate is roughly 13, 14 years ago. Okay. So in other words, around the time of 1990-ish, yeah. there might be something wrong. That's a speculation, you know, mm -hmm. and then, they, this might potentially create a panic, but I told them, I went there. In North Carolina, we went there to give a seminar, tell them don't be panicked because this happened maybe 10 or 15 years ago. May, maybe may, may not be here anymore because there's no new patients, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no sky on the you know, new, new patient is going to find recently. But, uh, so basically, uh, what we send is uh, there might be something strange, but uh, this should not be right now. So therefore, your daughters, you know, sons are safe because some of them has students in college. Son, right. daughter is college, and I, I cannot say. So, then this triggered another thing, and then uh, University of uh, Alabama uh, decided to help. Also, Urban University itself is going to help. So therefore, they are working together right now, even though they have a bad history. You know about football history? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know about that? What to say? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, they, you know, they, they don't get along in general. <laughs> you, you know, local people know. Bam <laughs> right? and mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, government, uh, you know, we went to government, and the government, local state, state uh, is corrupted, but uh, they conclude that this is not custom. Based on the very sophisticated way, uh, they check the employee number, student number, and apply the state's uh, average number kind of stuff to see, and then they include the professors, you know, different kind of uh, worker on campus. My response to them, you know, if this is kind of dormitory only event, you put many other patients, personally, in it, going to dial you out. So, but they don't have any data to check. In other words, example is a uh, uh, student just stay on the dormitory. How about that? Must be very young at the time, right? So they don't do it. They have no way to do it, they say. But uh, for the future investigation, it might be done because there's a very good, uh, you know, uh, alumni. It's a very nice city. Mm -hmm. there. They're very uh, friendly, kind, in general. Anyway, they uh, these people generate the website and then uh, yeah. So and then raise the funding and then doctors, uh, you know, uh, at the University of uh, 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 Alabama and. Our uh, university decided to participate in the uh, committee. Then uh, round table discussion is going to be held in January. All right, next. This is one that uh, I don't want to show this to everybody, but uh, this is a people distribution from north, uh, northern portion of the Pennsylvania, uh, New York border. Yeah. Patient that we brought it. Like this. So people come from around the river. And then there's an explosion, uh, PCB facility here, and then IBM, uh, just, you know, big uh, lawsuit against IBM there. Yeah. Shuttle contamination along the uh, Susquehanna River. So we are, this is kind of a different type of distribution that we saw, you know, not school or college, university, but uh, this is around the river, so we think that maybe something wrong, uh, maybe 20 years ago. And all of those reds are where people? Did, come from. So they're living right around the river where yeah. that was going on? Yeah. Again, if I you know, make a map for your neighbor, maybe I, mean, I might have the same thing, because this might be coincident because they live in this area, basically. You know, well, but, well uh, we saw my house first. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we, you know, we, we feel something strange. So that's the reason why we never lose any motivation or, you know, or enthusiasm in investigating this. Because even though government say don't do it, you know. Anyway, next one. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make that now for you. No, no. Yeah, we're going to talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. So challenge is uh, I mean, always so rare. So, and then if one patient moves from one place to the other, all of a sudden incidence decrease. So breast cancer doesn't matter, so many patients there, so therefore one or two, you know, in and out, doesn't make any change. So if you have a other it's very rare, therefore oh, it's very difficult to accurately find cases under, you know, current diagnostic coding. Also, patient move one place to the other. So, very difficult to follow. And then, other thing is causing agents. If we know the asbestos, for example, you know, we can just map out the you know, pollution site. But we don't know yet, so therefore, no way to just narrow down the location. 
So case reporting, as I told you, uh, most of the time a state communicates, but it's kind of not very uh, uh, up to date. And the state of Alabama is so collaborative, uh, they pick up many cases for the last five or 10 years, but before that, registry system is not so <coughs> up to date and up to date. So very difficult to use uh, the so-called uh, public domain information to define the cluster. So, uh, for example, uh, you know, one diagnosis in 2014, uh, it's not registered, it's like in South Carolina, and not uh, North Carolina. So, many other issues. Diagnosis in Pennsylvania, registered in Pennsylvania. So if uh, this rare disease, uh, one patient change is going to change the incidence. So that's a dilemma. All right, next slide. This is kind of statistics, you know. Then uh, this SIR, standard incidence rate, is uh, based on the state's incidence, age based on uh, gender details. Then apply to the, the area of the concern, and more than one is suggested. Then this uh, Mecklenburg County or North Alabama is not going to fit into this uh, SIR standard, so called the cluster. And New York, uh, Dr. Olaf is writing paper right now. In some location, New York uh, may be positive. But again, these two states that we think strange, you know, you know government, official communities, they are not. Uh, so we have many kind of concern about that, as I mentioned. Next one. So uh, then, we first of all, administration started in North Carolina. And then government community is so collaborative, and they get a grant. And then uh, we did a so-called geospatial analysis. In other words, so chronic exposure may cause cancer, so therefore, if uh, ask the patient uh, where they live, there they go during that time period, we might be able to map out the hotspot. So that's a geospatial analysis. Uh, we have a specialist to do that. And then uh, we check the you know, germline testing, we go back to our syndrome, you know, and more, you know, high incidence. So the result is published in on that online. I'm going to show you next slide. So you can go there, but the uh, hotspot is not the high school that we sought, but the uh, center of the city. So probably is, uh, this is the center of the city and everywhere you go, right? <laughs> so some kind of limitation. You know, if you have the 20 patients, they go to the shopping mall sometimes more, right? So therefore, their geographical overlap is going to be a shopping mall. So that's a dilemma. And also, especially if the one-time deal, like a high-dose radiation, you know, and doesn't matter how spot is matter, doesn't matter. You know, if you go there, you expose. Yeah. So just out of exposure, uh, like a limitation in a geospatial analysis, but uh, this uh, geospatial analysis is very detailed, done by a specialist, didn't narrow down any specific cause. Uh, he did a hot, hot area with a pollution map. He got all kind of uh, uh, public data, for example, PCB pollution, you know, some electric, uh, you know, uh, pollution. You know, he mapped up to, and then find out the hotspot with some correlation of the environmental, uh, you know, abnormality, but he couldn't find it. And then germline mutation, we saw that uh, they may have some background mutation, therefore they tend to have a cancer at the early stage. This is not like. What uh, we are doing is uh, tissue, it's difficult, but uh, sometimes biopsy tissue, the yeah, blood tissue left in individual institution, they send that tissue to the Columbia University. Couple minutes. Okay. And then uh, they are testing it. So, and then uh, North Carolina, you know, uh, investigation is still ongoing. But uh, now we, we found out it is not simple and easy. Next one. This is a website. I think uh, this should be available on the, uh, you know, some queuing sites presentation later. But this is, has very detailed, uh, you know, investigation on the geospatial market.
Huh? Let me take a picture of it. Yeah. I can send you. But we have four more minutes, so. Right? We can continue until somebody shows up. Maybe. Hmm? We can continue until somebody shows up. You got it? You okay? Oh, we'll be in a second. All right. This is urban update, and then uh, we go, went there at symposium, and then the lecture, and government staff, uh, you know, collaborating a little bit, but they say they don't want to do that. So they raise like a 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, not 100 thousand, but uh, also our universities are going to help. So they are, they are almost that. Uh, the most likely they are doing a molecular analysis in more detail rather than going into geospatial based on the experience uh, in North Carolina. So, uh, just about the molecular uh, investigation is not so easy because you need a lot of tissue specimen and they are very expensive. You know, one specimen testing maybe three thousand or four thousand dollars for one specimen. So, but anyway. We have a couple of specialists, like uh, Dr. Harbour, and other doctors are uh, willing to help. Dr. Colum, uh, Dr. Harbour, willing to help. So now uh, we are going to have a round table meeting uh, in January to discuss what the priority is. Next one. So this is a kind of concept of the uh, zip, zip code tracking. So this is a patient distribution right now, in 2016 or 18. Next one. So if you go back to 2008, they may be in the same town because they moved out, they graduate school. So what we are going to do, uh, also other people are going to do, is so-called uh, checking our residence history and zip map, zip coding, and then just put that in the database and to see any uh, hot spots. So you know, in five years, ten years, maybe some hot spots. The most interesting, uh, like five years, five years to fifteen years. Mm -hmm. If there are anything uh, overlapping, maybe that place may be a hot spot. Then we go into there and check the commonality. Next one. All right. So in North Carolina, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find any one specific agent, uh, but uh, we conclude that that one is not involved. <coughs> and then tumor, tumor testing is pending. And Alabama uh, discussion is going to be made next year, early next year. And uh, this is not the cure inside, but the MRI of cure when uh, take a lead of UBL melanoma registry. And this is going to be an international, uh, including Europe and United States. And Dr. Rich Carbajal uh, and Josh, uh, also in Joshua, uh, Australia, Carbajal is in the United States, Europe is uh, SECO. Uh, Dr. SECO is taking a lead from UK. And Jefferson project, uh, we are going to start database, uh, including a zip code tracking system, tracking. So next time, sometime you come back, maybe ask you to type in something, you know. That's uh, IRB, pending IRB approval. So they also, we are working uh, behind the scene to use uh, some cell line or a model which may have tendency to develop cancer or eye melanoma. Especially, we are going to start BAP1 and uh, knockout mice to see whether uh, any chemical is causing a similar situation. So then, this is expensive one, but uh, by checking a uh, cancer patient tumor gene, or, and sometimes uh, we see get some hint in our world. It is already almost known that UV light is not causing this. There is no UV light signal. So, but uh, they have, they are getting more data about the PCB signature, for example, uh, you know, aflatoxin signature, aflatoxin called the liver cancer. So, if we have enough tissue specimen, especially from the cluster area, we might be able to find some signature. That this could be from something uh, related to environmental toxins. So that's a big picture, molecular diagnosis. That's how we, we are going to our right now. The next one. This is a registry. International Prospective Ibia Melanoma Natural History Study slash registry. <coughs> going to start maybe next year, early next year. I think this is it.